Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Katherine Knorr. Today, our topic is Techie Factory, Building Powerful Minds. With me is Freddie Halstead, the CEO of Techie Factory. Welcome, Freddie. Well, thank you. Uh, glad to be here. That intro made me a little sad to be in Dallas, Texas. Um, it just looks beautiful. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Tom. All right. Yeah. So aloha from Hawaii. Um, anyway, so tell us about Techie Factory. Yeah, Techie Factory is the place where kids go to learn all the the exciting esports and tech that uh, that they already love doing. We do a lot of coding, but then we do Roblox um, experience creation. We do Minecraft. We do DJ. Um, you name it. If it's tech related, we do it. And uh, so we do summer camps and after school. And we are actually a franchisor and hopefully we'll be in Hawaii soon. Fantastic. Um, so what age groups are you focused on? Majority of our kids are, are younger, so kind of seven to 12. Um, and that's the majority of our customers, but then we have some older kids, especially for esports and some of the more robust coding. And so can this be like an after school babysitting program while the parents are working? I'll tell you, Catherine, uh, a large percentage of our kids that we see during the summer at camps, um, they have to work and their kids don't. And so if they can have them learn something cool and, uh, and the kids have a ball, then they're all for it. So, so especially during the summer, that's the case, but then after school as well. All right. Um, so is it in person or um, is some of it like remote? Sure. The vast majority is in person. Um, what we've found with this kind of age group of, of digital natives is that they just assume be at their house on their iPad or their PC. Um, and we want them to be with other kids. We want them to learn some of the social kind of soft skills um, involved with being around other people. And so we really like to get them in a lot of what we do is very hands-on. And so we very much prefer in-person, but then, you know, there's some people that that doesn't work, whether it be schedule or proximity. And, and for those folks, we do offer virtual as well. And so do you ha also have um, uh, native technology teachers? Um, I mean, are your teachers younger? You know, again, that's one of the, the really fun things about what we do. And what we tell, you know, potential franchisees is that it's kind of easy to have to find instructors. Um, we have a predominance of high school kids and college kids. And between how we present the material and, and kind of our, our platform and then our training, most of them are digitally savvy enough to, to do it and run with it and do an amazing job. And so what led you to start this? So I was a public school teacher here in Dallas for 14 years. Um, my wife and I, nearly 10 years ago now, opened uh, a mathnasium, which is a math learning franchise. She's, she's actually a math teacher. And we opened our first one here in our neighborhood and then eventually opened another and then acquired a third and so we were Mathnasium franchisees and we loved it. Um, we started to notice and really look at, you know, trying to figure out where the future is. And for us, um, trying to, you know, own more centers in other states wasn't a great option. And so we found a place called Techie Factory that was started by a former CIO at, at Pizza Hut and a really successful guy. And um, went to partner with him and eventually bought it from him and, and started working on franchising right before the pandemic hit. So how many um, locations do you have and where are they? Right. So we have two here in DFW and we're about to add nine that are predominantly in the state of Texas. And so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really young. Um, 
which is weird to say because it's been two and a half years. But we and we started franchising in earnest two months before the world shut down. So, um, so we're we're ready to grow now. And it sounds like this would be a great opportunity in any place. Is that true? No doubt about it. I mean, everywhere kids kind of of this age love um, what we teach, and the parents really see the value in, you know, whether it's coding or esports or all the digital creation that we do. Um, it's great, and and you know, one of the cool things about what we do is the entrepreneurial aspect, whether it's our content creation or our Roblox. Um, we really get to hone in with these kids on entrepreneurship and um, talk about money and talk about how to make money and talk about, you know, the fact that they're probably not going to design a game and become millionaires at 10, but they're examples of kids who are making money at, at 10 and 11. And it's just nuts. And, and it really opens up a kid's mind to, to the possibilities and, and it's a lot of fun. And, and to your point, yes. Um, I think the esports is a little ahead of the curve in some places as opposed to others, but the digital creation, the coding we do, kids love it everywhere. Okay, so a lot of um, people have this image of um, kids playing video games is not a healthy thing. However, your uh, your business is basically kids working with um, gaming and computers after school instead of doing sports. What do you tell parents who may have an issue with what you do? Sure, the dreaded screen time. Um, you know, it's a fairly easy conversation for a growing number of parents. We get calls all the time from parents who say, my kid's not interested in traditional sports. I really want them to find their niche. I want them to find their people. Um, can you help? Yes, yeah, we, we definitely can. And then for those kids, who aren't necessarily as introverted um, or who, who do want to play traditional sports, great. The reality is, and you know this, Catherine, that, that the vast, vast majority of these kids are playing video games anyway. And they get home and they play for an hour and then they go to baseball practice and they come home and they play for an hour and they eat and then they, if their parents let them, they pay for another hour and then go to bed. And why not why not put that in kind of a traditional sports setting where they're working on teamwork and they're working on how to win and lose properly, where they're working on, you know, healthy competitiveness. And we talk about the importance of nutrition and exercise and sleep because very few of these professional esports folks or even really successful streamers um, don't worry about their health at all. I mean, it's the human body. It needs exercise, it needs sleep, it needs good nutrition. And so we have the opportunity to talk to the parents about that. Sure. And um, one of my guests um, from an esports team uh, two weeks ago, he mentioned, uh, they mentioned that he got like five hours or less of sleep, sleep, uh, um, even in a week. <laughs> I mean, he was streaming all the time. So it sounds yeah. like a good thing that you combine those kind of life lessons with what you do. Yeah, because and it's streaming to a lesser extent, but professional gamers, their career is going to be really short if they're getting the five hours of sleep a week. Um, it just is. And so, yeah, we really want to focus on that. Sure. And, you know, um, I think there are some things like you talk about Roblox, you mentioned Roblox, and that's kind of like people talk about that being like the metaverse. Um, how do you, you know, if we're looking at the future of essentially the metaverse and of gaming, how does the metaverse um, factor into what you're doing? Yeah, so initially in kind of the current state of the metaverse, a lot of what we do as it relates to Roblox is 
teaching the kids how to make experiences, teaching them how to be safe on the platform. Um, and the cool thing about Roblox is there's something called Roblox Studio and you can go in there and create your own experiences. You can um, use a coding language called Lua to build just about anything on the platform you want. And so instead of trying to go to a 10 year old kid who maybe just did gravitate towards this and say, hey, let's learn Java or let's learn C++ or Python. We can go to them and say, hey, let's go into Roblox and build this cool stuff. Well, then they hit a wall as far as what they want to create. Um, and so then we got to learn Lua. Um, and so that's how we kind of introduce them to Roblox and get involved. And then, you know, the metaverse, Catherine and this and kind of youth esports in general are a big are really important to me. And, and I think us as entrepreneurs, us as adults, um, it's really important for us to help guide some of these companies or, or create them to make safe places online. Um, the reality is that the FTC is going to continue to change and update these laws to protect kids. And why not be on the front foot of that really and and create safe places now and and cool places and fun places because um that's the key with kids if they'll sniff it out if it's not cool um and and they won't be interested whether it's great or not and so yeah for us creating those those safe places is really important you know it seems to me that if a kid is uh, eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old now, that when they're an adult, that when they're a young adult, that will be when the metaverse becomes more um, part of our lives. And I would think that it would be very important for a potential career in a world where the metaverse is super big, that they would have this kind of skill and ex experience at these young ages. What do you think about that? You know, it's really it's really funny you mentioned that. And I, I think a lot of the listeners of Think Tech Hawaii will appreciate this, some of them will. Um, the reality is that these six, seven, eight-year-olds whose parents want them to learn to code, I think it's great because I think there's a, an abundance of soft skills that are really important. Um, that can be learned through coding. But the reality is when they're old enough to have a job, um, AI is going to be doing a lot of it. But to your point, there's still going to be all these new jobs created and all of them are great for these digital natives where they're going to be doing things as it relates to the metaverse. And so I think, I think teaching them now, again, to your very smart point, um, is really, really important. Um, and so, yeah, so, so giving them the opportunity to that, whether it's Minecraft or Roblox, um, Lego is about to come out with a metaverse. I mean, I think a lot of these children focused companies are creating stuff that, that we'll be able to utilize. Sure. And, um, so you kind of, uh, alluded to the pandemic a little bit. How did that impact Techie Factory? Um, so we, by all rights, we should be dead. I mean, Techie Factory shouldn't exist in reality. A lot of our peers um, didn't make it. A lot of the, the folks doing similar things, their franchisees in particular, didn't make it. We were very fortunate to be in Dallas um, where we had less parents that were significantly worried about COVID and they were satisfied with the precautions that we took. And so we were able to still run camps and still run after school. They were much, much smaller and with social distancing and everything else, it wasn't easy, but we were able to keep some kind of revenue stream to kind of get us through. Um, so it was, yeah, it was really tough on our business, but Kind of since last spring, where we started trending to back to normal, and and this summer we've had the best summer we've ever had, um, whether I owned it or, or or someone else, and 
so it's been great and we're we're kind of fully back on track i would think that there would be pent up demand for getting uh getting together in person there definitely was and and we look for that to really fuel the youth esports component of our business um and so yeah i mean that's going to be an exciting part of uh of, i think of this fall in particular and um what is your website uh techiefactory.com and from there you can go to either of the locations you can see the different uh different things we teach you can learn more about franchising um and kind of what we do in general and uh here pretty soon again to esports you'll find a lot more information we're going to have tournaments um all over the country um we're partnering with a company that does uh competitions all over the country and and so we're going to have stuff all over um our app which is called eTourney um is that safe place for kids to go on and and compete and create content and keep the creeps away um and so we'll be utilizing that but uh but yeah so this is something that could um go outside of the US um into other countries as well is that right it could um in fact we recently spoke with a company that is based overseas about possibly partnering and um and working together so no this is definitely something that could go overseas and the app uh in and of itself definitely i mean we we anticipate having kids from all over the world um again competing and uploading their their streams so that we can make sure they're okay and use as vods and they can um get and be in that safe space and what kind of you know clearly um what you're doing is providing education for children at young ages in uh technology what kind of jobs would this translate uh to them having in the future i mean i realize that the job situation may be quite different when they grow up but i'm wondering you know what what you foresee right now sure um the neat thing about us and what i think one of the big differentiators between some of the folks that are doing something similar to us in the space is that we do have that digital creation aspect and i think anything from coding to entertainment to music i mean we touch all of those um and so i think kids we we don't we don't feel like the 8-year-old that's in our place needs to leave and be able to be ready to be a professional coder, DJ, Roblox designer. We want them to be able to to understand kind of what these jobs are or or what these skills are and be able to choose for themselves. And we have a lot of kids who will come and do Roblox for, you know, two semesters and then switch over to something else but that's what we want we want to give them a taste we want to get them excited about it and then if that leads to them really finding a passion for it and going on to to do something in the space great but really yeah anything from coding to entertainment um we do chess esports so i mean the the potential careers down the road for these kids is limitless You know what's interesting we're both members of Esports Trade Association and I noticed that other members are not necessarily in the esports industry but they're insurance the insurance industry their lawyers or accountants um they're all you know in all sorts of different industries so I think that you know it it definitely uh, touches esports and gaming touches so much right definitely and i think all you need to do is look at so our business in the fall the youth esports tournaments by the time that gets fully going we're going to have marketing people pr people attorneys um all the people involved with the esports the live entertainment um the convention 
folks in whatever city um, that the list of of businesses that will be yeah the the list of businesses that will have financial gain from these events is certainly more than twenty or thirty for each event and possibly way way higher so yeah it's it's amazing the amount of different folks that um, that have kind of nothing to do with esports but um, uh, but they'll be making some money from it certainly down the road. You know, I always think with with Hawaii that we should do esports tourism because, you know, we have a robust tourism industry here. Um, but you know, certainly when you're talking about a tropical location, um, esports tourism would be an option. And 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 we even have like at University of Hawaii we have uh, like tourism programs, you know, so that that uh, people can major in tourism. So I could even see that being something like esports tourism someday. And, you know, so it kind of even goes broader. Um, it, it goes very broad. Yeah, and I think that's the, one of the great things about esports as kind of a revenue generating device. So you could have a fairly large few hundred kid youth tournament um, or series that culminates with an event in Hawaii. Well, then that gets the local kids more interested. That gets adults more interested who really see the value. Um, and then suddenly you have teams and clubs there in Hawaii um, and then someone contender belong, whoever comes and opens an arena and another, and then, yeah, then you're having multiple tournaments. You're having folks coming off, you know, ships just to do these tournaments. You have folks from the Pacific um, and the States involved, but yeah, all it takes is getting someone to, to kind of start it and do a great job. Sure. Um, and, you know, when, do you have, um, sponsors within your company like are there any are there any um uh companies that are sponsoring like you techie factory and providing you with gear and stuff there aren't yet we we're not big enough to be completely honest um one of the really exciting things we're doing Catherine, is we've created a, a nonprofit, so our franchisees, once they're all over the country, can run these camps for underprivileged kids and run these after school labs for underprivileged kids that wouldn't otherwise be able to necessarily afford what we do. And we will raise the money here in Dallas and then be able to send it to them. So these new entrepreneurs don't have to foot the bill, but they can really get out in their community and help a lot of kids. And we have some great donors. There's a company called a lot of here in Dallas. Um, a great software company that has really been helpful in that regard. Um, but I think once we grow that business, once we grow the youth esports, then I do think we'll be able to go to sponsors and um, and if nothing else, have the opportunity to offer our franchisees um, a chance to get discounted stuff and things like that. So we don't now, but I, I definitely think we will. Now, what are you looking for in franchisees? Like what attributes would someone have to have in order to um, open a franchise? Yeah, I, I think a love for kids is paramount. Um, again, my wife and I, school teachers, a lot of the people that work for us um, have been in education or kid-related franchises. Um, and so a love for kids, I think an entrepreneurial spirit is really important. Um, and then it kind of depends from there. I mean, I think we'll have successful franchisees who are teachers and have someone who helps them run the joint. And then during the summer, they go full bore into it. Um, I think we'll have obviously business people, um, folks that own other franchises. Um, but you know, some of our, some of the people in the pipeline are, were CPAs. Um, a week ago and decided they wanted to do something different. Um, some of them will be esports folks who realize that, you know, 
like everything in our culture, it starts with adults and then kind of goes downhill um, and eventually gets to kids and they want to be able to take advantage of that and kind of shepherd those kids. So it's a variety of different folks. Sure. And um, would you, could you foresee partnering with something like the YMCA or some other kind of um, program like that? Yeah, I think the nonprofit um, really gives us the opportunity to do things like that. There are for-profit businesses um, out there that are currently partnering with YMCA and, and to a lesser extent, big, big brothers and big sisters. Um, and so I think we, we want to do a lot of stuff like that. And a lot of the YMCA thing, options are for older kids, kind of high school and, and middle. And, and we want to give the opportunity for, you know, elementary school kids. Um, again, pushing the fact that we want them to be out there um, getting exercise and getting sleep and not flipping out when mom or dad says, turn your game off. Um, but they're playing anyway. So let's get it in a really healthy, positive setting. All right. So, um, Freddie, I'll let you uh, tell people how they can reach you and connect with you if they're interested in either having um, their child uh, be part of your program or if they're interested in becoming a franchisee. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear from all the potential franchisees there in Hawaii, and I will be happy to come visit. Um, but yeah, techiefactory.com. And then our app is called eTourney. Um, it's in the app store now. You can download it. It's completely free. Um, our nonprofit is TF Promise. And all of those have a presence on LinkedIn. And then it's kind of a hodgepodge, to be honest with you, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and everywhere else. But, um, but yeah, if you type in Freddie Halstead, you'll find me and, and all the, the cool stuff we're working on. Fantastic. Well, Freddie, thank you so much for being my guest today. Thank you, Catherine. It was a pleasure. All right. So uh, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, actually in two weeks, my guest will be Leilani Fairness of True Esports. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.